These are these three things I'll share with you if you're thinking about a career pivot. I've been a wine director for a fancy Michelin star restaurant. I've started my own business where I teach wine and wine education. So today I am well known for knowing about wine, but it was not always that way. I actually started my career as a nurse. And I think about that career pivot I've made, and I think if I could go back in time and tell myself three things to make it easier, more seamless, what would it be? So first thing is get your money right. You need to think about the financials of this. I'm sorry if I sound like your dad or whatever, but it's just the truth. Getting your financials correct, knowing what your budget is, how much you spend a month, how much you need to make a month, will help you make these decisions of, is this the right thing for me or not? And I think this is just easier if I explain my situation to you. I was 25 years old working as a nurse in downtown Chicago. If you worked during the day shift, you got $27 an hour, but I worked the night shift because it made more money. <laughs> so I made a $5 differential, meaning that it was $32 an hour. So if the average work week was 36 hours, I would make hashtag math, 32 times 36, about $1,000 a week. But I got paid every two weeks, so it's times that by two. That's about $2,300. But then take out taxes, cause you know, that's actually what I'm living off of, right? I live in Chicago, I live in Cook County. So considering all that, it's about 70% of that amount. So that puts me at $1,600 for every two weeks. Math, more math, get ready for me. So if that's every two weeks, times it by 26 weeks, and that's how much you get paid a year. So this was pretty much my yearly pay, $42,000 after tax. This is what I am taking home and putting in my bank account. By accounts, it's, you know, pretty good. I was independent, I didn't have to take care of anyone, I didn't have to send money to anyone, I didn't have any kids, so this was all really for me. I wanted to think about my monthly budget. How much do I spend on rent? Do I plan on having roommates for X amount of time? You know, am I dating someone? Does that help with the financial costs for owning a place, right? Then you wanna think about car payments if you have any, you know, all this stuff that your parents told you to do is actually incredibly helpful for this situation because you need to understand very clearly how much money do you make now? How much money does it take for me to live my life and what's the trade-off for me pursuing this new career? I knew I was over it, right? I knew I was ready for something else when I was working as a nurse. I wasn't necessarily guaranteed a much higher wage. Maybe if I worked at the right place, maybe if I did the right things, but that's something you're really gonna wanna consider. How much are you making now? How much do you need to live your life the way you wanna live it? And then how much is this new opportunity gonna cost you? And here's something about starting a new career. You're probably gonna suck at it. No one's gonna wanna pay you really at the price that you feel like you deserve yet because you're just not good enough yet. You need to allow for the buffer of learning instead of earning, right? So know how much money you need to save and save that. I did it for about six months. Six months is a lot of emergency money. It gave me the confidence and the buffer to say, hey, if this doesn't work out, at least I'm solid for six months until I need to do my backup plan, right? And that leads me to my next point. Always have a backup plan. <laughs> I have the world's best backup plan by pursuing this wine thing. I can just be a nurse again. There's always gonna be nurses. There will always be a nursing shortage pretty much. I'm pretty golden. I always joke that if this whole wine thing or the slick thing doesn't work out, I'm just gonna be a Botox nurse. I mean, even if the slick thing does really work out, I'm just gonna start doing courses or classes, Botox and Burgundy. I mean, it's a pretty good deal. So have a backup plan and a pretty solid one that's gonna dig you out of a hole if you need to. Let's get this straight. Do you need to believe in yourself? Absolutely. But also know that life isn't fair. You could do everything right and still maybe not make it, or it might take years to make it. Don't think you're gonna make it in a year. Give yourself five years. Give yourself that buffer to say, I'm gonna start today but it might take a very long time to get there, but that's okay. So yes, think about the financials, have a backup plan, but also there's an emotional aspect to it. Why do you want to change careers? Being a nurse is a pretty good job, you know? I had financial stability, I could always have a job, I had a 401k, I had health insurance. I worked three days a week, even though those days were intense, it was still, okay. I think a lot of people are okay with being in a corporate job or a nursing job or something a little more conventional. So you kind of have to ask yourself, what is the tipping point for you to make that decision for yourself? I learned within myself that I had to be more uncomfortable with my current situation 
than the discomfort of changing my situation. So I had to be more uncomfortable sitting at the nurse's station at two o'clock in the morning to be able to say, I'd rather take the risk and the pain of changing my life and my career than staying where I'm at. Also consider what transferable skills you have from your current job to your potential career pivot. For me, nursing has a lot of interpersonal and soft skills, things like talking with people and patience and effective communication, taking big giant topics like diabetes and putting them into teeny tiny sentences that Americans can understand and take home with them and actually be effective in learning. These are all good skills, but they're not necessarily good skills for every single job. Working in wine, however, that makes total sense. A lot of wine is personal, it's emotional, it's communicating how wine is made and who is making it and why is it important. And there's also so many other factors to wine that I just find interesting. There's historical context, there's ecological context, environmental context, business context, right? The business of wine. Wine touches on so many different things that it all starts with the people and it all starts with the great product and then it blossoms into all of these other things. And you can probably hear how excited I am about it because that is my natural inclination towards this topic. And if you want a career pivot and you're talking and you're feeling this energy and the way you talk about the thing that you're excited about and people feel that, then maybe you should pursue it. That's a huge component of it. And asking yourself, do the skills I have now or the skills that come naturally to me fit into this new career goal and why? Even considering all of these things, it's still gonna be hard. I feel like I've been eating sandwiches for the past two years and I'm still, I'm still, <laughs> and I'm still learning, but the learning never really stops and you will get better. But the thing is that you can't stop. Have a long enough time horizon where you don't beat yourself up for feeling like oh, it's been six months and I've been making a piece of content today and I haven't seen any results. I was like, okay, do it for a year. Do it for two years. Do it for five years. Expand your time horizon. Life is short, but also life can be kind of long. <laughs> <laughs> so you need to do what makes you happy. I hope these things resonate with you and kind of gives you that extra practical push that you might need to decide if a career pivot is right for you or not. But I definitely know it was for me.